Today, I have done what I thought I never would do. I broke into another person's home. I've watched it for at least a full day now. It's been barricaded in a way that only another human could open. Or well, perhaps I'm just projecting my uniqueness and humanity onto it. Moreover, I thought it was safe, but nothing was as it seemed. The danger outside it was irrelevant. The age of the corpses inside indicated that they had all been dead longer than everyone else. It was cacophony. Let me start over. My park is rather low as of this writing. However, it was empty before. I was faced with death of salvation or a cessation of my honor through theft. I chose to steal, and so I selected a house that was totally empty. The fact of the matter was I was hungry. I doubted I could find fresh food, but roughage and hardtack have kept me alive this long. Hunting has failed me, and my bow had broke long ago. So I placed my ear to the door of a few homes and began to listen. Every home in town had already been sacked or contained corpses. So when moving north, I tried to keep my eyes open. Forging has kept me alive, but it won't forever. Winter will come eventually. So eventually, I found this promising home. I watched it for a day, as I mentioned, and then opened it. I met with horror. The floor was a massive congealed blood. Not quite dried, but neither was it dripping. Ankle deep and almost more like a jelly than an actual fluid. I could have spread it on bread if I was so inclined. Buried in it was what brought me the truest horror. A family of six and one knife, still clutched in the hands of the largest corpse. One doesn't need to be an alchemist to understand what happened here. The father stabbed his wife and four children to death before turning the knife on himself. A ritual sacrifice? Ungraceful suicide? I wasn't sure, but the paintings on the wall gave me a few hints. I sit in the room, writing what I see now. Painted on the wall in blood is a sort of eye. Bloodshot. It's large, bigger than a serving platter, larger even than a wall shield. A full-grown man could sleep on this eye comfortably. Seven veins reach from the edges to the twisted pupil, each vein splitting into eight arms that terminate in the hand, reaching for a spiral at the heart of the eye. The hand that made this is not in this room. Everyone here has clean palms and fingers. Well, what passes for clean in a room caked in blood? I looted the house. I had to. My clothes were little more than rags. Feeling sentimental, I took a sailor's garment. Not just for the wishful thinking, for truly I could be on a boat somewhere, receiving news of the bloodening of this country via seagull. No, a sailor's clothes are meant to be armor, just as a knight's steel is. It's coarse, tough, sturdy, water-resistant, and stays clean long. A boon, as I can safely say I've cleaned my clothes only once since the start of all of this. The food and such I took also, but then I found an oddity. In a closet deepest in the building, there were seven shelves. These shelves were sectioned into two-by-four little boxes, each box containing a pot. The pots were growing moss, though I knew not the purpose or the power at the time. I took a pot out and began to examine it. Picking through it, I found five little pellets or stones, which I took to be food. I know not what moss eats, but... Whatever this plant is, it masses around the stone like sharks and meat. Little else to do, I rolled the moss between my fingers. It's dark green and flecked with grays and blacks. It's a pleasant texture, squishy and cool. Fuzzy. I placed it in my mouth, unaware of what was to come. Most rame of mosses are very edible, a useful thing to know when stuck in the woods. Rapidly, a feeling of fullness came over me, and I recognized what I had swallowed. It had to be grown for a reason. It's something unique to Rame, called Fasta's Moss. Priests eat it while bargaining with God for a revelation, and a confession made under its effects are truer than the norm. Soon after, something else happened. I began to feel a revelation coming on what interested me. Most laymen wouldn't procure a revelation from Fasta's Moss, which meant that I was gifted and could have been a priest. Before the plague, of course. 
I checked to ensure the door was locked behind me, and inside of the bodies I allowed my mind to surrender to the sights. It was not a fortunate portent. As I looked at the spiral eye on the wall, it twisted and distorted. The hands reached for the spiral and began to pull and push at it, twisting it. It grew shiny like a mirror, and images appeared in it. There were things I had spent the last few weeks seeing. The nearly dead walking, killing, and eating. It was too much for me. I shut my eyes until it all went away. And swayed in the blues and the greens of a navyman's garb, I left. There was nothing more here for me.